Let's start building our first application using Ruby under our new Linux desktop. Let's open the terminal really quick and let me just maximize this. I'm going to go to the projects folder and inside I'm going to type in gem install rails. We're going to use Ruby on Rails as it is a great platform to use under Ruby to create a great product for the web. Oh, let's just type in ruby-v so that you can assert that we are using the very latest version of Ruby. Now I'm going to type in gem install rails and this should be good to go. It is going to install all of the dependencies for rails and after that we're going to bootstrap our application. Okay, rails is installed and now specifically for rbmv I'm going to type in rbmv rehash. This is important for this tool because the binaries need to be made available. rbmv takes care of that, so we'll need to use this command. Let's type in enter, and this time we should be able to type in rails-v. There you go, rails 402 is installed and ready for us to use. I'm going to type in rails new and some application. I'm going to type in, for example, store. We can create a store application that will contain many different products. Let's just wait a little bit until Bundler installs all of the necessary gems for Rails. Okay, it seems we have an error regarding SQLite 3. You can see that we don't have SQLite 3 installed, so let's see what we can do to fix that problem. Since this is an Ubuntu system, we need to install something by typing in sudo apt-get install and then the name of the package. I don't know exactly the name of the package, so I'll just type in apt cache, search, and then SQLite 3. Let's type in the password, and we have loads of different SQLite files. Let's take a look really quick. We have loads of different libraries on SQLite, so there should be a SQLite library for us to use correctly. Okay, there you go. These are the files that we should be using. lib SQLite 3 development. I'm going to copy this little portion, so copy, go back to the very bottom, and type in sudo apt-get install, and then the name of our package. I just typed in control shift v to enter whatever we had in the clipboard. So I'll press enter, and this will be installed, and hopefully we should be able to install our Rails application correctly. Let's type it in again, Rails new store, or in fact we can just type in bundle install. The Rails app is already in here. If you type in ls to see the list of files and folders, the store file is there. So we can navigate to it, so cd store, and finally typing in bundle install, because it recognizes the gem file right in there. So let's do that, bundle install, and this should be good to go now. Okay, our bundle is complete, and so we can now begin to use our text editor. I'm going to restore this window and place it on the right side. And now let's open Sublime Text on the left. I'm going to open a particular folder. So you just go to File, Open Folder. I'm going to My Home Folder, then Projects, and Store. You select it and click Open on the right side. Let's go to the right side really quick and create a new Rails generator. So I'm going to type in Rails generate and then scaffold. Scaffold will allow us to have a minimum set of interfaces to create products and manage them. List, show details on each product and delete them. So Rails generate scaffold product and it has a title, then a description which is going to be a text area. And then we're also going to pass in, for example, a category. Category will be a string, so I won't pass any specific kind of attribute, the same way we did for title. So I'll press enter now, and it should run OK, but as you can see, we don't have an available JavaScript runtime. There are many different types of runtimes you can install. For this reason, and to be simpler, I'm just going to type in sudo apt-get install node.js. Node.js is a runtime that's available, so we're just going to use it. There's really no reason to use another one. After all, this is just for development purposes. You won't be needing to install a runtime in production. 
So let's do that and install Node.js. Okay, after this is installed, let's type it in again, the Rails command to generate all of our resources. There you go. We have loads of different files, loads of different templates, a product controller, fixture files and tests, and also the assets that we need, the JavaScript file and the CSS file. Okay, let's clear the screen and go to our application folder. Let's see what we can come up with by going to the views, layouts, application, HTML, ERB. I'm going to maximize this just so we can get a clearer look. And now all you see here is a standard boilerplate for Rails applications. If we want to, we can go to the terminal and type in Rails S to see what we can come up with already. I'm going to go to the browser by clicking on Windows and then 1. The same way you can use this on Windows, you can use it on Linux, specifically Ubuntu. Okay, so the browser is up. I'll type in localhost port 3000. The result will be our application working, but in this case, it seems that we need to migrate our database. Let's do that really quick. I'm going to open yet another terminal window and I'm going to our projects slash store folder and type in rake db colon migrate. Let's do that really quick and our database will be finally migrated. Now we can go to the browser and reload. There you go, our application is working. If you go to slash products here, we will go straight to our products page. We want to create a new product, so let's just do that. I'll type in tomato, which is a fruit. I'm going to specify that in the description. It is a fruit, not a vegetable. The category will be, for example, fruit. We'll write it to be a little nicer, fruit with a capital F. Pressing enter, you will see that the product was successfully created. This is the page for the tomato, and we can go back to the list of all of our products. You can destroy it, and it will pop up a confirmation prompt. I'm not going to do that just now, so let's just move on. Let's say that we want to add some different styling onto our application. I could be showing you Ruby right now, but for this case, I just want to spice this up a little bit and then come up with a different feature on our application using Ruby. So for that, I'm going to the Zurb Foundation website. So I'll just type in foundation.zurb.com and I wanna make sure that I can use this with Rails. I'm gonna click on getting started and we should be able to use this with Ruby on Rails. I wanna to go to build an app here. I'll just click on this link and you will see that it has support for Rails directly. We just need to add this gem to the gem file, type in the bundle install command, use the generator to have the assets ready and just require foundation inside of our assets. Okay, let's do that. Let's go back to the top, copy this gem right here, go to our gem file and paste that link reference right here. Let's just go right next to jQuery Rails. I'll type in foundation rails, as you can see, then I'm going back to the terminal and type in the bundle command. You can just type in bundle, it will be all right. It assumes that the install command is going to be requested. So we just need to wait a little while to install the gem. And after that, we should be able to run the command that's provided in the documentation. Let's just type in rails g foundation colon install. Let's press enter and this should pop up a series of different files being created, then it is going to conflict with the already existing application file. This is because a foundation requires some JavaScripts and CSS files to be added. So we can just type in yes, because we're just still early in the project. I'm just going to overwrite it. There you go. We have our new application.html.erb file. Going to the browser and reloading the page now, you can see that it already imbues some aspects of foundation. This is still not exactly like the way foundation should look like by default. We can just go to our editor and go to app assets, style sheets, and then scaffold.css. And we can adjust these default settings for Rails as we see fit. 
For now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove some of these default settings for our basic elements, such as links and body elements. I'm going to remove all of this and the remaining are actually pretty semantic. I'm just going to leave them as is. Going to the browser again, I'm going to reload and there you go, you can see now a much more default-like look and feel for foundation with the blue links and everything. So what should be our next step? Well, we successfully bootstrapped a Rails product with a product scaffolding and a CSS framework. Let's jump into our next lesson where we'll introduce a new feature of adding in a quantity to each different product and also by providing a button to add in a new order with each different product with the respective quantities. I'll see you soon.